Okay, welcome back to the Chip8 emulation project here, interpretation, whatever you want to call it. So I found a different test suite, sort of ROM, kind of an amalgamation of the, the previous test ROMs and stuff that I've been messing with, but it has stuff for regular Chip8 as well as Super Chip and XO Chip as far as testing quirks and instructions. So I kind of wanted to go through this and get sort of better, better compliance with the spec, we'll say, <laughs> for regular Chip8, because I've been a little over the place with that just implemented stuff to make it work, and now I'll try to kind of narrow it down and get it to work exactly how it should, at least for the original chip 8. If I want to do super chip stuff, that'll be on other videos or that'll be later on. I just kind of want to get, you know, full sort of spec compliance for the original chip 8. That's kind of the goal that I want to do. And if that plays some of the games that were made for the HP 48 calculator and the super chip, if it plays those wrong, so be it. I can at least play original Chip 8 things. But this includes, you know, the IBM logo, a similar enough ROM to the test op code one I've been using. It doesn't have the bond coder test, but it does test like different flags and happy paths and carry flags and things. So this one's pretty good. This is by Tremendous, who did a tremendous job with this, uh -huh, right? <laughs> so this is a pretty good test suite and I'll have a link to this in the description. Uh, I had planned to stop after the previous, uh, I think, five parts by now, but this will be an extended sixth part, <laughs> at least to get better compliance. And because I was like, well, you know what? It said a lot of my stuff was wrong and I don't want to leave it there. <laughs> you know, sort of lie to people that this is a, a decent emulator. So we'll, we'll go with this. But it's pretty nice. You can pick stuff on the screen. I'll probably just be doing the, the F and V keys to move up and down, Z to select. Of course, we can fill out memory to auto start. And I may do this if I'm going back and forth a lot. I'll just speed it up a little bit, but we'll go through this here. I'm in the regular one. I think there was one change that I did just to test an instruction here. Yeah, because I was setting flags wrong. So I'll, I'll go through this when we get to it. But just for this instruction specifically, 8xy4, as an example, um, I was setting, you know, VF like these other ones. I'm setting VF before the actual computation, which might not be correct if one of the registers used in the instruction is VF. So that's... That's a bug and that should be fixed. So that's not uh, really being fixed right now. But this is an example of that. I'm setting a, a carry value according to if we would have overflow. And then I'm setting VF to that carry value, which is a Boolean. It'll be zero or one after I do the actual computation here. Because it, it said explicitly, I think, set VF to 1 if there is a carry, set it to 0 if there is not a carry. And that's an 8xy4. I don't know if they say that on this page, the Wikipedia page. Oh, it does. Set to 0 when there's not. Okay. So I was just doing the carry value wrong for that. But anyway, that's an example. That's the only new thing I have in this file. That's why I put new on the end so I'd know what to search for. So I did do that for 8xy4, but that's the only change I had. I may get to the to-dos as well, which is only this one, <laughs> to deduplicate this, but that's like an extra thing that isn't really needed. But anyway, I'll, I'll get on with it, right? Let's get on with it. Let's check out this test suite, ROM. So it'll have a splash screen, which you can use to test outside the IBM logo if you want to draw something. See, it's gray because I still have the kind of lerp effects going. Press any key to go on. We can test, you know, the IBM logo here. It displays it. We do still have the ghosting because that's how I have, my, I have my stuff working. Um, I'll press V to go down. We can test the Core X89. And we got all these all right. So that's good. So flags. I know this is going to be wrong. So we have some happy path values. They're mostly correct. 8xy5 has an error on the last one. 8xy4, this 8.4, did have an X before, but I fixed it with that, you know, checking the carry value first and then setting VF to that after the, uh, the expression there. So I did not do that on some of the other ones, and that's probably what these Xs correspond to. 8xy5 and 7. And some carry values were failing on. Also 8xy5, 6, 7, and E. And FE looks to be all right. This is supposed to be a check mark, not necessarily a, a V or anything. So we have some issues on there we can look at. And there's also quirks we can look at, which let's say we're only going to deal with super chi or regular chip 8. This flashes a little bit, so that's kind of odd. And it's telling me I'm, fa I'm failing two thirds of these, four out of six. That's all right. Display weight is off. This could be related to me. 
um, only setting the draw condition on the two instructions and not just updating every 60 hertz, that might fix one or two of these. I'm not sure. I can check that right quick. VF apparently is supposed to be reset, which it's not. And some other issues. These are explained on the readme on the Git page as well. I'm just going through this as a sort of lightning round right here. So keypad, this just tests if the key is pressed or not. So I'm pressing A, so the 7 is on. You know, you can test that they're all working. I do have to press them a little bit because the screen doesn't update unless I like hold it down. So I may be handling keys wrong, I'm not sure. I don't think there's a reset for this either. So that's key down, we can test key up as well. And I know you can, you can auto start these if you set certain values in memory, I know I'm not doing that. But this says, okay, they're all not pressed by default. And we can see, you know, the opposite effect here. You know, so they don't register all of the time, which probably isn't great. But I think that's what the last one on here checks anyway. Which is the FX0A get key. So this checks kind of... You know, you press any key and it checks which one you pressed, and it says, oh, not released. So apparently, <laughs> I'm supposed to check if a key is pressed and then released, and then that counts as a key being pressed. So that's one other thing I'm not doing, and that's because originally this didn't mention it because I guess it's not the best page. Oh, well. A key press is awaited. It doesn't say you have to release it first, but apparently you do for original chip 8. So anyway, this goes over some of the stuff that was wrong. Um, with the stuff that I failed here, don't mess VF up. Yeah, those are a little unintuitive to debug. The happy path checks these things and checks these. So 8xy5, for example, vx minus equal vy. The check marks effect, if the output value is correct, which I think all mine had the correct output value, if the flag is correct, which would be the second one, that might have been bad on some of these in the carry flag conditions and the order in which VF is read and written to is correct. I know that's wrong for a lot of these. So I can at least check that with these 8xy 1 through E instructions. Other FE, I'm not sure what that is. FX1E adds VX to index. Okay. Does not check for overflow as that's not really defined. Okay. So the third check mark for VF order, something like V0 plus equal VF works. It's easy to make a mistake if setting VF first, which is what I did, because it's easy to make mistakes, and that's my middle phrase of a name, easy to make mistake. These test quirks, VF reset and or an XOR reset flags to zero. Is that true? Can I corroborate? It doesn't say anything. That might have been in the original chip 8, though. That is possibly. I don't remember what page that was on. Is it like, oh, here it is. Okay. <laughs> 8xy, VF changed. Okay. So VF was changed originally. It doesn't say to what value, but I guess it's changed to something. Reset to zero. One, two, and three. Well, we didn't have three originally, but this set it to zero. Okay. I think the flags are set correctly on 4 and 5, but alright. I'm a dilly-dallying, as they say. <laughs> so, we'll get on and I'll try to... This, these were the first things that were wrong, so I'll try to correct these. The 8xy, whatever values here for the check marks. The y or vx, depending on version. Hopefully the version is correct. Arithmetic ops and flags, okay. All right, well, well, we'll check those here, I think, first. And I'll probably set it up to auto go through these as well. But we'll check that first. Flags. So 8xy5 and 7 I'm messing up, at least on the happy path. Does that correspond to anything? Vx minus equal, vy minus equal vx. I like how these are reversed, equal minus. I think that might be a typo. That's all right. <laughs> Maybe it's not. 
Don't expect an overflow carry or shifted out bit. That just says the order in which VF is read and written to is the third one. So we know the VF order is wrong for mine on 8xy5 and 7. So I can try to affect that, which I think should be easy enough. I'll just go to the bottom and go up, where I can search 8xy5. Do I have this right? So VF to 1 if there's not a borrow. Yeah, OK. And I'm setting VF first. We would want to do that second. But I'll just do what I did up here, pretty much. I'll probably just do this for all of them, because that's easy enough. We can store the value and then set it later. So that's fine. So we'll set VF equal to some carry value that we set. And I'll set that here. Constant bool carry will be the, the return value of this expression, this conditional. If y is less than or equal to x, then we'll set it, and then we'll set the carry. So I even had this marked out too. VF to 1 if there is not a borrow. I guess, or 0 if there is. But we'll see. That's 8xy5. So I can see if that's right. And it's not. Redefinition. Okay. So if I don't do braces, I guess that's what happens, right? This looks jank, but I want to see if that handles namespacing and scoping. It does. Okay. So I could just set a... Don't even worry about it. I had a clock going. Let's set that up again. All right. Don't know what I'm doing. Okay. 8xy5. Let's go back down here and we'll just take the bull carry. I'm just going to put this like up here where I would normally define things so I don't have to redefine that like 11,000 times. We'll just do that. Say carry flag vf value for some instructions. We'll just say that. That's all right. So then I can set carry here. It doesn't need to be a constant, though. Yeah, I don't want that to be a constant. So we'll do that. Duplicate case value. Get, get rid of both braces. That would be better. All right. Did we fix? carry value on flags for 8xy5, at least here. Hey, we take, we fixed it there. Okay, 8xy7 as well, and then carry on 7e and, and 6. All right. Keep forgetting fg. Okay, that's just a similar thing here. Instead of vf, I'll set that to the carry, our boolean. And VF will set to that carry value. That should fix those. Should hopefully fix those. I'll probably set up to auto go through these. That is annoying. Okay, so 5 and 7, so 6 and E are also bad. So if I look at the menu here, this is number 3. So I can set that automatically, I think. In memory, I can say when we initialize, this will be a temporary thing, but we init, when we init chip 8. I can set that in memory here before we go. To do, remove this when done testing. We'll do set uh, auto test on startup. Does that make sense? We'll do set test to Auto, I'll say autoplay. That, that makes sense. Set the test to autoplay on startup. So, chip 8 RAM, I think it's 1FF. We set to the number 1 to 5. But I don't remember. He says down here load value 3 into 1FF, load the ROM starting at 200, and start the interpreter. This will be at the entry point. Entry point is at 200. 
So that should be okay. So this should be the flags one. It's only for this test suite ROM, but that should auto start up into flags and it does. So that's good. Okay. So 8xy6 and 8xye, we need to check the order of VF being set. So 6 and E. And I did that again. Dang it. Control Z. Okay, stopping it. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> no HF is annoying sometimes, but that's okay. So 8xy6. Store shifted off bit. Okay, that's because I'm setting VF first. We could call it carry as well. Yeah, I guess, yeah, you could think of this as shifting a bit through the carry flag. So yeah, that's fine. We can say that as carry as well. That's okay. That'll be the carry bit, zero or one, which will be true or false. That'll be okay. We'll set it there. And we want to do the same thing for 8xye. Set the shifted off bit here, zero or one. Okay, so the least significant and the most, and the most significant, yes, okay. See if that worked or not. Is it okay, did I fix, are these all check marks? Hey, they're all check marks now, that was easy enough. So the logo plays, 89 plays, yes, and the flags works. So that would just be quirks in the keypad. So whichever one you want to do first, I, say, I guess quirks. I am interested what S chip says, because I do not have proper S chip support. I apologize for the flashing there. That's kind of just how it checks things. I am doing F. <laughs> I am doing S chip support actually for all these. That's funny. That's actually pretty funny. I meant to be doing chip eight regular support. All right, what do you say, smiley face? VF reset is off. Memory's off. Display weight. Let me just do this. That's easier for me to remember. Display weight is off. Clipping is good. Shifting is not good. Okay. So we'll start from the top and go down. Did I do ZZ or did I do that? Okay. I did that. So if I go down this one, VF reset and or XOR. So 8XY1, 2, and 3 reset flags to zero. Is that no matter what? I guess that's no matter what. One, two, and three reset flags to zero. Okay. That just sets register VX ORed with VY. Do I OR it and then set flags to zero? The, the original spec says VF has changed. I guess we'll see and we'll uh, we'll find out. I guess I'll do it after this is done. This would be something we can make configurable, of course, for chip eight versus super chip. Probably would be good. Uh, we'll do chip eight only quirk, I guess. Chip eight only quirk. We'll just say that. Maybe I'll put a note. Later this could be like a configurable value or something for chip 8 versus super chip. But that's all right. So it said 1, 2, and 3, right? 1, 2, and 3 reset flags to 0. Okay, I'll reset after those and see if that uh, makes a difference or not. Might, it might not. We can test the flags here first to see if those are still correct, even with those changes, 1, 2, and 3. Looks like that is correct. So we do quirks and chip eight. Hate that flashing, sorry about that again. Okay, reset says it's good. These three are wrong. So memory, display weight, and shifting. What is memory? Save and load. Increment the index register. Okay, increment index. So super chip does not, which is what I went with originally from this Wikipedia page. I is left unmodified, which is D. In the original chip 8 and chip 48, I is left incremented. In S chip, it's unmodified. Okay. 
So I'm just doing different, uh, yeah, different behaviors here. Probably should have that as a configurable value. Yeah, let me let me do that here, because I'm not going to remember to add that in later. <laughs> we can either set like an enum for the version that we're doing. I guess that might be the easiest. If I want to have extension support later, instead of like three separate bools, it would probably be better to have like this. So let me put this up. I'll keep the enums kind of together here. We'll say chip eight, I don't know, version or something, extension. Chip eight extensions, maybe. And we'll say regular chip eight will be zero. And I don't really have to do this because these will be zero, one, and two by default, but that's fine. It might be better to set values. Actually, I don't need to. Yeah, I don't need to set values. We'll just do that. We'll do super chip or HP 48 or something, and we'll call this XO chip. And the config, I'm going to set extension T, extension, the current extension, we'll say current. Current quirks, extension support for e.g. chip eight versus super chip. Of course, this would be like if else is and stuff per instruction, which isn't great, but it's not every instruction. So even if we have specific if else is for things, that's like, I don't know, four, <laughs> five, six, eight, nine, I don't know, maybe like 10 total instructions. It's not too bad. It's not every single instruction, so. That's not too bad, uh, hopefully. We might want to set debug values as well, though. Oh well, right now I'm only assuming chip 8, so that's okay. Put that there so I know where to return. I'm passing in config, yes, to this? Okay. So let's go back. If config... Extension, wait, is that, <laughs> is that a pointer? That's not a pointer, okay. So config dot extension, which is current extension, which is a big word, big phrase here, all right. If current extension is chip eight, then I'll do that. We'll say reset VF to zero, and we'll just do that for all these. Although we could have it once if we check case one, two, or three. Oh well, that's life. Okay, that way we don't have to worry about those sort of quirks there for that. So we are doing different things for the other ones though, but... Uh, oh well, <laughs> let's say... Whatever the other one was, was it FX55 and 65? Yeah, register dump. So these increment I on chip eight, they do not increment on S chip. Like I have these notes there. S chip does not increment, chip eight does increment. S chip does not increment, so that's what I'm doing here. So we can say if, not chip eight, if config, current extension, equals super chip, we'll do this, or we can have chip eight do something else, do this. All right, so how do you increment I, whereas previously we're not incrementing it, we can do I plus plus, which looks I plus plus plus. <laughs> Probably don't wanna do that. We'll just do it separately. Uh, actually I can do, yeah. Shift O for that. Increment I each time. I think that is correct. I'll just make that look the same there as well. Except this does VI from RAM here. It 
don't increment i. Let's do that here. Don't increment i. So that's vi. Actually, I don't have to do that. I mean, I can do it like this, but I'm doing the same thing here. If I'm doing it, if I'm doing this. So I really just have to do I plus plus within this if statement. We do this first. And if it's chip eight, then we increment. Yeah, that's less lines of code. That looks better. Of course I have to do that, but that's fine. I wonder if I can, does this look okay? This doesn't look great. Sometimes the one-liners go on too long, so it's not great. Oh well. Close that loop there, okay. So that's 55 and 65 for register dump and load. Let's see if that works. It does not. I is undeclared. Oh, chip 8i. Yeah, duh. Chip 8i. <laughs> My mind was in the right place. My heart was in the right place. My mind was not. All right. This still loads the flags. We'll, we'll probably want to load the quirks instead, and that definitely is not correct anymore, so that's nice. Definitely not good, probably because I'm not setting the extension first every time, so we'll go to set config from args. I'm not setting it at all, so it's probably like a bad value, right? Current extension, this will equal chip 8. Set default, we'll say quirks slash extension to plain OG chip eight. Does that fix things? <laughs> does that fix drawing? It does not, oh, that's not good. So why would that mess up drawing, I wonder? That's interesting. Oh, I don't wanna run it again. That's interesting. I know these flags are okay. That was only affected with I, which it's offsetting from I to draw instructions, right? Isn't it? This chip eight does increment I. Is that not correct? That was correct. I equals I plus X plus one. That's interesting. Well, VX to MI. <sighs> okay. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> Cause why would I? More information here and here. Door and load, let's look at those. Let's look at those. That was the guide I used before, right? No, this is different. Starting at address I. Well, this has machine cycle time, that's interesting. So it goes over what the original ROM data was and what it affected, that's cool. I order address and I. Ooh, flow charts, those are nice. Get value store or I load. Store it in I or VY. Compare increment VY, increment I. Is it equal? Yes, pop, return. That's okay, that's interesting. I is not reset. I will be pointing to the byte after the location of the last value stored. There's no validation of the address. Okay, the location for the last value stored. So you don't do, you don't do I plus I then. We increment I, we don't do this. That's probably what's effing up there. <laughs> so we'll have to do my current thing before. That is a, okay, that's okay. That's okay, we'll do this differently then. So we'll take it at i, and then we'll increment i, which would be plus plus. 
because i will be zero including x and it will be added every time say increment i so we'll have else i'll do whatever the original one was which will be big i plus little i okay yeah we'll do it like that i'm not sure if that's more correct i think that's more correct but I'm not absolutely sure. So this offsets from i, and this increments i to store it. I think that's more correct behavior. I believe, <laughs> I'm hoping. So this would not be i plus one, this would be i plus plus. Not what I wanted. Let's do dt this. Else will offset from i. Okay, maybe that'll be a little bit better. Probably won't, but maybe. Will it draw any better? Possibly. Oh, that draws better. Okay, so that's what I was supposed to do. <laughs> Don't add i and then add one again. That's not that's not correct, which does kind of make sense. So this will be flashing again. Sorry about that. It's really egregious the way it does it. Um, okay, that fixed the memory, so that's good for regular chip eight. So we have display weight and shifting display weight. Drawing sprites weights for the vertical blank interrupt which should be the 60 hertz value, limiting their speed to max 60 sprites per second. That's probably where I'm not waiting to draw, or well, where I am <laughs> waiting to draw, because I added that draw flag. That's probably what this is, which I figured that would help with flickering and stuff, but you know, we'll see. Does that, I didn't want to do that. Does that uh make things bad or something? We'll just update the screen every 60 hertz regardless. That's what this will do. And actually, let me change the, the value. The test that we autoplay here, let's change this to four. Should be quirks test, yeah. I think I still have to choose though. Yeah, chip eight will do. I think I can auto set that, however. Okay, display weight still does not work. I don't really know what he's expecting to happen there, but all right. <laughs> Maybe he's expecting uh, FF versus zero, zero for the color. I don't think that's right though. Shifting is not right either. Four is the quirks test. Can I set that automatically as well? I think I can. Loading one to three at FE. Yeah, okay, that's easy enough. That's right before it. So this is quirks test, chip eight, quirks test. Just say end to do. So I'm not sure this mattered at all. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what they're wanting here. Drawing sprites to the display waits for the vertical blank interrupt, which limits speed to max 60 sprites per second. Okay, I guess they want a different interrupt speed because I'm delaying 60 milliseconds at most. When the next interrupt occurs, it will read this memory and draw to the display. Wait until the next display interrupt has completed, preventing sprite tearing. I mean, I get the concept of v-blank, I'm just not sure what it wants me to do within code. I know I'm just searching for the word interrupt. <laughs> like, this is where you're drawing a thing on the screen. Sprite tearing effect. Wait until a screen refresh has just finished and then draw. Well, you're gonna wait because it refreshes at 60 hertz. Does it not want me to do that? 
You want me to draw and then wait <laughs> the time before updating? Right pixels are X forward. Carry flag is set. I guess it goes at the V blank interrupt. This is at 60 hertz. So you're saying graphics is not at 60 hertz, it's just whenever. Maybe it wants me to update the screen within the draw instruction. Is that what it's saying? Maybe. Because I'm not doing that. I'm delaying and then I'm updating the timers and the screen. So does it want me to update the screen here and then wait? <laughs> like it wants me to update the screen within the instruction? Here? Well, here. Because I'm setting stuff to draw, but I'm not drawing it physically on the screen. I'm waiting, you know, the 60 hertz delay. I'm not absolutely sure. I don't have the guide here, do I? Yes, sir. Yes, I do. Does this mention anything about like waiting for the V interrupt, the V blank? Does not say. Does not say, because why would it? That'd be too easy. It's for the vertical blank interrupt, limiting their speed. So I, I don't know how I'm supposed to wait for the vertical blank interrupt. I'm not sure what it wants me to do. I am pretty dumb though. This doesn't say anything about waiting or how long to wait. I understand wrapping. So timing is complicated. How many rows the sprite has, pixels it's offset from screen data, collisions, whether it's off the right edge or not. If you ignore the case where the height is zero, 170 cycle. You want me to wait the right number of cycles? I'm not going to do that. I know you want to avoid tearing. Almost the whole frame before it can continue. So you want me to time to where if it's drawing a sprite and it should take longer than a frame, then I should keep drawing on the next frame? Is that what it's wanting me to do? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I'm not going to do that. That probably would be more accurate, but oh well. If I'm doing that wrong, let me know. I'm not exactly sure what they're wanting there, however. So I'm not going to worry about that. <laughs> At the moment, if the other things work, then I'm okay. I think the other one was shifting. Clipping I got, or I'm clipping correctly or not. 8xy6, 8xye only operate on vx. Instead of storing the shifted version of vy and vx. Okay, that is true. That's what I was doing here. 6 and e. Shift VX to the left, VX to the right. Shifted the value in VY and stored the result in VX. Chip 48 and Super Chip ignore VY. So Chip 8 actually used VY instead. Okay, that's what he's saying. This says they only operate on VX. I have it as off which means I should do VY. This doesn't have 6 or E in it because they're undocumented. Hey, wonderful. Uh, okay, I'll try um, not to click on that. <laughs> I'll do what this says here in the footnote on Wikipedia, which says the original interpreter shifted the value in VY and stored the result in VX. Great XY6 and E. I'll try that and see if that's what it means. So 8xy6, we're setting the carry and then that. So it said y and stored the result in vx. So let's do if config current extension is chip 8. 
then we'll shift the value in y instead, which means this has to be y. Set these up. Otherwise we'll do x and shift x. Use vy. And this will use the X, if it's super chip or XO or whatever, this will be equal to the carry and we'll want to set VX equal to VY. Uh, equals Y. Set VX equal VY result so set the carry set these else we'll set the carry set that and this will be equal to the carry regardless okay i think that's what it said shifted vy stored the result in vx so we don't store the result in VY, is that what it's saying? So they're not equal. Only operate on VX instead of storing shifted version of Y in VX. Yeah, I guess I don't overwrite VY there. Hopefully, we'll see. I'll say we shift VY, but we're not overriding the value, which means I don't need this equal, but VX would equal VY, shifted right by one instead. And we'd use the value in VY that we're shifting off, yes. But we won't overwrite VY. And this is the original implementation that I had. Okay, I will try that for 6 and E. So this will be VY instead. Actually, this will be VX. This will be VY instead. Use VY. Carry will be set there. And we'll use VX for non original chip 8. Okay, so VX will equal the value for VY. This is shifted left by one, yep, okay. Uh, set VX equal VY result. And VF will be the carry, yeah, okay. We'll see if that's correct. It might not be, probably won't be, but we'll see. What will we say? Oh, flashing face. Oh, it says it's right. Shifting is correct. Okay, so that's what I was supposed to do. For original chip 8, shift VY, but don't override it and set VX to that result. Otherwise, super chip and whatever, use VX. So I'm not doing the display weight. I don't really care. So we might have some sprite tearing, I guess. Oh, well. <laughs> Uh, I will check if the flags is still good after those changes I just did. And it looks like these are all good. Okay. So we got IBM logo, we got Corax, we got the flags, we got the quirks. So now I'll just check the keypad, I guess. Well, not that, but... Um, this. Let's get rid of that. I'm going to do the last test here. And the number would probably be three for this, I'm hoping. This is keypad test, and three was FX0A. So I'm assuming he made it work similarly for both, or the, the person made it work similarly. I think it's a guy though, yeah. Okay, so five would be the last one on the menu, so we'll see how that works. 
if that works. Press any key, yeah, so not released. So we have to check that the key fully releases before we actually count it, which is A waiting till a key is pressed. So we, we got that it was pressed, but we also need to wait till it releases, <laughs> at least for accurate uh, implementation. Well, originally, when the key was pressed down, it also made the beeping sound, and I don't want to do that for my sanity, so I'm not going to <laughs> for your sanity as well. We have the state that it's pressed. I guess we would wait again until that key is released. We have any pressed is true. It's set to false when we enter. If nothing has been pressed, do this. Else we want to wait until it's released. Or at least till that key is released. Because it got the key press. It stored it. I'm not sure if we'd handle multiple key presses. I don't want to get into that. That would be annoying. We're, we're ending on the first one. So I suppose we would check if this key is released, which would be I here. It would be in VX. All right, else a key has been pressed. So a key has been pressed. Also wait until it is released to set the key. Uh, the key is not pressed, you're not pressing, yes. One and six, it, it tests multiple. Asks you to press a key, when you do it checks for two issues, not halting, it turns immediately, I don't do that. Yeah, I halt until the key is pressed, so this is true, I am doing that. But I, but I have this error. It does not wait for the press key to be released before resuming and I guess storing it. Not exactly sure how that's supposed to work, to be honest with you. I'm trying to think how they would store multiple keys and have this work, but I guess it's just checking until one key, not multiple, but only one is pressed, I suppose. So we don't want to store it until it's pressed and released. So wait until it's released to, to set it in VX, which would be I here. So let's do this. We'll set key to I. So we know this key is the one that was pressed. And I guess I can make this static. I'm not sure. Maybe I can make that static. <laughs> so it's true, and then when it's released, it'll be false. Well, not really. We have key equals zero. Key equals i. i might be zero. Let's make this an int. Because this will only be zero to 15, so that's okay. I'll set this to negative one. This I'll make static. So we'll keep this through invocations to uh, getting a key. So if a key has been pressed, I want to check until it's not been pressed. I guess, maybe. I'm probably overcomplicating this. <laughs> and we can use the keypad state to, uh, to check these things. So we really would just check the keypad state. We need to check if it's pressed and then released. So it's pressed. We need to wait until it's released. So I guess I would keep checking this while keypad I. And then when it's released, I would set it. So I guess I'll do that. So while the keypad key, which I set key to I, so I have it outside of this for loop here. So while that key is pressed, that'll be true. We won't do anything, we'll busy loop, and then we'll set it afterwards. So VX equals key. So, busy loop until key is not pressed. Now this doesn't work because I need it to work like this. I know I want to set the key back to negative one after this point. So I probably want to keep doing this here. We'll say if, if it's still pressed at this point. This is convoluted, I don't like doing this. That's all right. 
So let me do this busy loop. Uh, chip 8 emulation until key is pr not pressed, until key is released. So that'll make sure we're still going in a loop to this instruction every time. And then if this is not true, then we'll set the key and we'll reset this. Reset to not found key. Reset key to not found, we'll say. That's English, okay. It's a little convoluted, but we have to wait until it's actually been pressed. So if they didn't press anything, we'll be in effectively a busy loop. We'll keep emulating this instruction until we get a key pressed. When they do press a key, we'll have that value within this key variable. And if it's still pressed, then we're gonna keep going back to this instruction. And it should say, it'll, it should still go down here and say it's still pressed. It'll take the first one, of course, but that's all right. We don't have in key rollover. It just takes the first one, I guess. So that may not be exactly right, we'll see. But it'll keep coming back until that key is not pressed. That original key here, or whatever the first one it finds, I guess. But when that's not pressed, then we'll set it, and we'll reset this key. We could do that within here, though. I could say key equals negative one, and so if we already have a key, this would not be negative one, and it would skip the loop until it's not pressed. That would mean I should make this a Boolean, or I can make that static as well. Is that all set to true? Then it would be true here. It would still be true. So I'll set it. I'll set it here. Any key pressed equals false. Reset to nothing pressed yet. So hopefully that works. So this will be like saving the key. Save pressed key to check until it is released. So I'm gonna put to do here so I remember to delete this line in case this is correct. This is true, we'll break. Okay. Okay. Ah! <laughs> I, oh, we don't have I, that's true. I don't wanna run this. So that's at 1009, that's this one. So yeah, it would not be I, it would be key, because key at this point is equal to I. And it might give me an error because this is an unsigned int and this is not. So uh, if we want them all to be unsigned, that's fine. It's U and eight, it should be zero to 15, so we can set this higher. We can say FF, which would be negative one, but it's U int, so it's fine. All right, set it to 255. Okay, that way this will be set to key. All right, we'll see. That may mess up, but I'll press one. Hey, all good. It waits till it's released. Okay, so I think a part of that was, I mean, it goes over in the link that this guy provides, I think. So part of this originally is trying to emulate somewhat um, debouncing, I believe which is like, how do you tell when a key's fully released? You have to check the bounce delay. You have like some timing issues to check if the key is still down, if you want to do key repeat or not. Uh, but okay, maybe that'll fix some issues with like key presses and games and programs and stuff. Probably will not, but maybe it will. But that's good that that kind of worked. So that's not too bad. Okay, we can test the other key functions as well, maybe. But I want to get rid of this now. And that's still that. That's the only last one. Okay. So let's test the other key functions there. Should be keypad. Let's test which keys are down. So nothing's down, so we should test one. So two works. One works. I kind of have to keep it down for a second for that to work. You have to hold it down a little bit. I guess it checks if the key is pressed, but also, I mean, 
We do have that draw flag, don't we? Right, so if I get rid of that, it should update faster, I think. Just for this screen. If that works better, then I'll just turn off the draw flag. It might be a little more clipping and stuff, but or flickering and stuff. But that may be all right. That may be desirable. No, that doesn't seem to update any faster, actually. Okay. The keys do work. There's a weird delay there, but the keys do work. So I'm going to say it's probably all right. <laughs> all the keys, none of them are pressed. We'd press one and six, one and nine. It does, t it does check multiple. We do all four. There's just a bit of a delay, but the keys do work, so. All right, all good. So let me go through the, the first three once more just to ease my, my weary mind. <laughs> Make sure everything's all right here. So for regular chip eight, I'm not checking super chip or anything. These all look like check marks. And one more time for the bad quirks, sorry about this. I really don't like the way he does flickering to test display weight, but other than that, which I don't really care about. Um, but if you have suggestions or guides on how I should do an actual timing for that, uh, that display weight interval, like do I really want to wait the specified microseconds for display frames while I'm drawing to the display inside the instruction code? If I need to do that, that's fine. But if you know, let me know. If not, I'm, I'm really not going to worry about that. So. I'm going to say we're good. <laughs> and not deal with it. So if I go back to something like I was testing before, bricks, this might not display correctly anymore because this is super chip 1990. I don't think this is for regular chip 8. But it seems to be all right. I'll put a little bit of ghosting on there. It doesn't seem to want to go over. There we go. I'm not sure if this behaves any better or not. I guess the paddle moving back and forth is a little less sort of loosey-goosey. <laughs> Since I suppose before it was, you know, just going on immediately, now it waits until the key is released. Or at least it just checks. I don't know. It depends. But it still seems kind of similar to me. Does equals still work to reset? It does. Okay. I can check UFO again, which was 92. This may also not be fully correct anymore because I'm doing chip eight, not super chip, but it seems to be all right. Other than the sound being delayed, which is not too bad. What high score can we get? 55. Oh, missed it. Oh, missed it again. There we go. 70. I guess the, the small target is 15 and the large one's 5. It looks like that. Okay. Does Tetris work, which is the only game that anyone needs to test with, right? All these are 1990s games. <laughs> they seem to work all right. They don't really rely too much on bad behavior. I forgot the controls. That's my excuse for letting that, that slide right there. There also, I don't think T-spins are in this. But you can nestle them in there. No, I lied. I meant to press E, not Q. These dang controls. I really should have like a remap to WASD or something. That would be great. Right now I'm just trying to make people mad by being bad at Tetris. <laughs> That's all right, but stuff seems to work, so hopefully it's even a little bit better compliance with regular chip 8. Uh, so I'm going to call it here <laughs> officially since I got more flags and stuff worked out for those instructions. Hopefully this video is not too long, but if it is, oh well, I can try to edit it down a little bit. Okay, so that's all I'm really be going to be doing for this main chip 8 emulator or interpreter for C and SDL, I guess, and the implementation there. Um, I guess uh, I probably said at the end of the other videos, but <laughs> hope you enjoyed and thank you very much for watching. If you want to see Superchip 
or XO chip or something, I can look at those. I can try to implement those. Those would probably be extra parts tacked on to whatever playlist this ends up going into on the channel. Um, otherwise, this will just be the main five or six parts for the chip eight emulator. So hopefully you learned something and I wasn't too, I don't know, tired or, or monotone or uh, failing too much here and there. And it wasn't too boring, but maybe you learned something or enjoyed it or fell asleep or what have you. Um, a couple episodes, I may have been hopefully not slurring my words, but a little bit more <laughs> uh, loose than usual because I like to relax after work. So my dark beers, as it were. Well, that's all right. Again, hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Really do appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next whatever I do, I suppose. Uh, yeah, if you have suggestions, um, maybe on the display timing for that thing, for the display weight, I can look into that. But uh, but yeah, if you want to see Super Chip or other extensions, I can look into those. Maybe Octo as the assembler. That looked interesting. Or write my own assembler disassembler for this, possibly. That'd be interesting. Uh, if you want to see other implementation for uh, emulation things, <laughs> in whatever language or whatever libraries or, or what have you. I'm usually tempted to do more from scratch to learn more stuff, so it, it would be SDL or some similar GLFW or something, I guess. If not writing directly to the frame buffer, but I don't know if I want to go that far. Uh, maybe. If we have dev FB0, I don't even know if I have that in here. Do we have dev FB0? We have FD. We have FB0. So possibly I could set up IO controls and just write to the screen directly. That might be fun. <laughs> custom homemade windowing system. I'll just be drawing a rectangle and writing to it. Anyway, getting ahead of myself. So if you want to see other em emulation things, like for CPUs or for game consoles or something, let me know. Uh, otherwise, if you have suggestions or things you want to see in general for programming related stuff, let me know. But uh, as far as it is for this, I consider this to be done for a chip aid emulator and thanks for watching. So. Yeah, I'll do the official one now then. Uh, <laughs> cheers.